Hello and welcome to show number nine. I'm Andrew Jones, your host for the Inner Flame Ascension Symptoms, The Peacekeeper Show. You're listening to The Inner Flame with my dad, Andrew Jones. Dad, it feels weird calling you Andrew Jones. Dad, you know all this talk about your soul and the spirit? Well, do you know anything about boys? That's my dad. (laughs) (laughs) It seems Mercury is still in retrograde, and I can only attest to this because my computer is having technical issues like never before. Uh, My 24-inch iMac died. The logic board died not too long ago, maybe about six months ago. And now this Mac Mini that I'm using primarily as a as a as a workstation is for the last few days has been has been really playing up and it's it's starting to put a bit of a damper on my ability to uh, create stuff. So I've got two podcasts that need to get done. This one being one, and then Your Life Starts the Day, which I'm a part of, is another. You know, it all needs to get done. But for the last day and a half, I have not had any audio ability. <laughs> on the on the computer and after some reboots some restarts some resettings and what have you uh, I've been able to uh, get it all back up and running again and it's not the usual fixes that will uh, take care of something like this so it, it's pointing more towards a hardware issue and I'm praying that it's not uh, I guess it's gonna slowly reveal itself over the next uh, few weeks I'm not in a position right now to buy a new computer so this is the last thing that I need on my plate. I do have the ability, however, if uh, the computer does fail, I'm still able to record podcasts to a certain degree. So uh, I've actually got some pretty cool people lined up for interviews. First and foremost, I'll be interviewing Larry Heisler, who has a massage school in uh, Parsippany, New Jersey, northern New Jersey. He's an old spiritual teacher and friend of many years gone by, so uh, I'll be hanging with him at some point this weekend. Today, as I'm recording this, it's 3.15pm, February the 28th, 2013, so uh, in a couple of days I should be seeing him. We've yet to uh, line up a specific date and time, but I'm looking forward to that. He wants to talk about how today is the perfect day and age, the perfect time in millennia to be spiritual, to find your path to uh, to make your mark and what have you. It really is the perfect time to, to come into your own, to explore that side of you, because everything else out there really is lining up beautifully, so or has lined up beautifully, and it's it's just there for the taking now really the veil is very thin manifesting happens really quick right now i have uh, dr jamie feldman who is a doctor of hypnosis we're going to talk all about the latest uh, techniques and the um, the techniques the revolutionary techniques that he's using the state of the art hypnosis and uh, what he's able to help with i'm not sure we're actually going to be telling you how to hypnotize although i do know how to hypnotize i've been hypnotizing people ever since the age of 16 i'm not certified but maybe if it goes well with the interview with jamie that what i'll do is uh, i'll look into actually getting some sort of certification but i do know is a little bit expensive so i'm not sure it's something i'll be doing right away but that is something that uh, i wanted to do years ago more for uh, sports and uh, sports performance because that's how I became incredibly strong in the gym and uh, yeah I used to when people were in the gym and they were uh, about to do a certain exercise or perform a certain move I'd go up to them and I would simply plant a suggestion now it was not hypnotism but I would set the stage in their mind and um, set a very powerful suggestion and I would watch them as more often times than not, they would uh, they would perform the act almost with ease, uh, just just incredible. So I really know about the power of the mind because I've been using hypnotism for my benefit for years. So uh, and a few of my friends they're also uh, uh, 
they, they also practice hypnotism. And I think, if anything, it's a, it's a fantastic way to reprogram old, non-working habits to create new habits that reinforce the new behaviors that you need for the new routines for the, for the person that you wish to be. And in today's day and age, when everyone's talking about change your thinking and you can change your life, well, I've always known that's the case. I've taken steps about changing it and uh, feel I've done so very effectively. So I look forward very much to uh, interviewing Jamie Feldman and that will be on March 11th I'll be interviewing Jamie and uh, I'll be driving down to his office in South Jersey and uh, I've also put a call in to my dad who's a fantastic specimen of a man (laughs) and uh, can't wait to uh, post a couple of photographs on here. You know we went out to dinner years ago at the Fox and... I think it was the Fox and Goose on, on the A38 on the way to uh, Bristol Airport. I think that's what it was. I can't remember now. Roads and names of places of where I used to live are but uh, almost figments of my imagination now. Dust in my mind. But So we were out to dinner and there was a guy behind us that I knew. Uh, I think we used to call him Fox at the gym. And Badger! <laughs> We used to call him Badger and Fox. Where did that come from? I knew it was some sort of wildlife animal. So, yeah, we used to call him Badger at the gym at the uh, Empire Sports Club in Bristol, uh, where Den Welsh, bless his heart, who's uh, passed away now quite some years, and uh, sadly I was not able to attend his uh, his uh, funeral. But uh, I digress. He um, He was at the Fox and Goose eating dinner, and his arms were, like, bulging out of his shirt. And my dad looked at this guy and said, you know, I'd love to I'd love to get in shape or have a body like that. And I said, well, dad, you you still could. It's, it's all up to you. you. Just you're like an engine. You're like a car that's never been pushed. It'd be great to uh, to see you get in the gym. And in fact, I'll, I'll go with you. So what happened was we both started going to the gym. Empire Sports, uh, not Empire. We both started going to uh, Designer Bodies in Ashton, uh, which I believe is no longer there now. We aimed for a competition and we did it. So we gave ourselves roughly six months and I lost 72 pounds in six months just by working out and getting stricter on my diet. And that was it. That was that was the beginning of it all, really. And dad has not looked back ever since. Uh, my youngest brother, Paul, and I, we, we taught him everything we knew about diet and supplements and, and, and working out and resting and nutrition and all of that. Yeah, he's dad's been the one that's kept it up the longest and he's the one that's got the uh, most amazing physique. I'm not sure, I think. I think I might be recording over another segment where I say that when my dad goes into the doctors, sometimes the doctors, especially in the hospital, if dad ever has, years ago he used to have some medical issues uh, with his, because um, he's had a motorcycle accident, so I think he's uh, he's he's been on. Remember, in the old days, they used to put you in traction. You know, three months or six months, you'd be in the hospital bed, and they put you on traction. They put weights on your feet. So he he had that done. Yeah, just horrendous, really, when you think about it. But he did that, and years later, said, "Look, we need to build up your your body." So uh, it it takes control of uh, some of your issues. But anyway. I digress again. So when he goes into the hospitals, the doctor pulls in the other training doctors and nurses to say, look, this is where your muscles are. This is where your bones are. Because he's like a, a living specimen <laughs> of like the the perfect uh, physique of where everything should be in your body. Dad, dad always gets a, a kick out of that. He gets embarrassed as well. He was recently, <laughs> he was recently on a cruise with my, with my mum and uh, the fitness guy there said, uh, Mr. Jones, would you like to be the, uh, if you could come in without a shirt so I could show you off to the uh, to the class for how to do, like, the exercises? Dad was just embarrassed and he decided not to. He said if I was there, though, he might have had the nerve to, uh, the nerve to do it. So I said, oh, Dad, you should have did it. That would have been great. You should have done it. <laughs> I live vicariously through, through my dad's stories. You know, my dad got back into working out when he was uh, 42, 43, was it 46 i think it was 42 or 43 and i'm 47 now so it's by no means too late for myself by any by any by any uh uh breakdown but um yeah i'll uh 
it always seems lately like life is just a little bit too busy for me to uh, get back to the gym. But I really have to because um, uh, my body severely needs it. So, you know, it just it just makes life that much more beautiful, doesn't it? When uh, you can go out and walk if you need to walk as far as you need to walk or run as far as you need to run or just climb up and jump up and do things. And it's just when you have that ability to be more physically able uh your mental acuity your your mental brightness sharpness is just there and it makes all of your decisions and all of your actions just that much more in alignment with uh, what they should be which is why the dietary and the physical ability of us is my number one focus in the uh in the in the series of um in the book and the set of cards that i have uh, been working on which will be out in not too long but with everything that has been going on I've been set back just a little bit and in, uh, in getting everything done because just so much is going on elsewhere the last couple of days have been uh, just well today and yes yeah the last couple of days it's just been so warm and I'm sat in this office and I'm looking at the air conditioner and although it's still you know there's still snow on the ground um, I don't know if it's because it's just getting warmer in this house or I'm getting more unfit so I'm getting hotter just by doing nothing or uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's uh, what's going on. I need to crack a window or, or get a flow of air going in here because I just feel extremely tired and it could also be that I am very tired. I was up to three o'clock last night. Uh, like I said, I've, I've got computer problems and I was trying to f- sort it all out and fix the issues. And then I found a whole bunch of folders with just tons of information that does not need to be stored on my computer. So I'm looking for a hard drive that I can transfer all this data to and then just put it aside for a rainy day or for whenever I need it, just to archive it. This past few weeks, I've been listening to on Audible uh, the source field investigations, the hidden science and lost civilizations behind the 2012 prophecies unabridged by David Wilcock, narrated by David Wilcock. And the length is 19 hours and 22 minutes. I have to say, this has been probably the most fantastic book that I have ever read or listened. This is the one book that put all of my understandings, that put all of the things that I am interested in, into one cohesive, and if you've read or listened to the book, you'll realize just how just how relevant cohesive is, into one cohesive mass of information. Uh, the breakdown of the book, it says a stunning synthesis of hidden science and lost prophecies. The source field investigation exposes many great secret secrets, DNA transformation, consciousness science, wormholes, st- stargate travel, sacred geometry, ancient conspiracies, multidimensional time, the Maya calendar, and a stunning new model of galactic energy field triggering mental, biological, and spiritual evolution. More than 2 million people have seen David Wilcock incredible tour of 2012 prophecies in his internet documentary, 2012 Enigma. Now he expands on with his vision with a cutting-edge investigation into alternative science with deep insights what is coming in to our future. Unlike the apocalyptic viewpoints depicted in big budget disaster films, Wilcock believes that the 2012 will be a watermark for widespread acceptance of a greater reality. And in his book, he lays out many of the blueprints for such a golden age. What's funny is when you hear someone break something down that is so out of left field, yet it makes so much sense. And then he mentions things in the news that... All right, so here's here's one example that I was just blown away with. And to me, on a very deep level, it makes sense. I feel it's true, and I think he's hit the nail on the head. They have found that the core of the Earth spins at a slightly different rotational speed than the outer crust. They found, oddly enough, that there is a vertical line that rotates, or does the energy stay still? I can't remember what it is now, but there's a vertical line. And because the inner rotates at 
a different speed from the outer crust, what happens is every like 292 or, or whatever it is days, every so many hundred days, there's an anomaly. And what happens is there is a breakdown in time and space on the earth. And apparently it happens at multiple locations. One of the locations is just out of New York. I think it's Long Island, somewhere off of Long Long Island, somewhere around there. And I don't know if any of you remember, but in the news, not so many years ago, there was a news story about people saw a bright light and people are thinking it was a rocket or a mortar or a a ground to air missile that was being launched at a passenger jet. It brought down the jet and I think a bunch of people died. I can't remember how many, but it was sad. But I think what happened was a bunch of people saw this flare of light. It brought down the plane. So, Obviously, people thought, hey, it must have been a rocket or a, or what have you. But I'm not sure what the exact story, what the breakdown was. And I can't remember if it was covered up, whether they went with the yes, it was this or yes, it was that. But it certainly seems to have been dropped um, as we've moved forward. So the scientists did some research. And I'm not sure whether David Wilcock did the research, but some scientists did the research and they found a pattern. And they found this pattern was like 200 and something days, I think, 290 something days. So what they did was they looked back in history and time and they ran this pattern to see were there any other anomalies that affected aircraft on this 290 something day period. And yes, there was. There were other flares of light that were seen on that specific time and day. Um, not every occasion, because I don't think there was a plane in that time at that particular location. But they found 19 instances on that 290-odd day mark where odd occurrences happened in the very same spot, which was, uh, like I said, it's around New York, Long Island, some around there. So 19 instances they found, which were absolutely unbelievable. So they're now saying, and you've got to read the book to find it. I think this part of the the book is in chapter 12 through 15 and up, because that's where they talk about time travel and time vortexes and what have you. Just absolutely mind-blowing. And I'll tell you what, for as much I come away... (laughs) I invent things, I design things, I I love, like if someone said to me, here's a box of 5,000 parts, they need to go into a machine, they all need to be printed on one side, they all need to go into a box, they need to have a ribbon on them, and packed into a large crate. This needs to be done with a machine. I would actually design a machine that could do that. My, my brain just works that way. Oh, See, I got a little message then from the from the heavens. That was my phone text message. Apparently, someone uh, messaged on uh, Facebook. Maybe I come away after reading this book with a, with almost on the tip of my tongue sort of explanation, like oh, it's something's there. That I had some sort of an epiphany of deeper understanding or an ability to build something that would you know. I just something's there, and I don't know what it is, and it's bugging me. But reading this book was mind blowing, and to put. A lot of the information that people in today have kind of let go. They've stopped chasing. They stopped looking at. But the scientists have measured up or these individuals have looked up and and cross-referenced this this period of 290 odd whatever it is days. And they found 19 19 other instances on on that calendar of events where things have happened that would have lined up with this time anomaly. So that in itself was mind-blowing. I'm going to read this chapter all over again uh, as soon as my brother's done with the book because I have to say it is such mind-blowing stuff that it really shook my world and I became a kid all over again. I so wish I could be learning out there in the field and and, and looking into all of this like a, like a scientist. But there's no real way to do that right now because i got bigger and better things to do. I can live vicariously through books like David's. So I just absolutely urge you to, if possible, go out there, get this book and check it out because there's some just mind-blowing stuff out there that will question that will help you question your very reality it will it will give you a great insight that everything that you see and experience around you 
is not all there is. This world that you think you are living in is not all that there is. There's just so much amazing beauty and wonder and mystery out there. And just because we see something, we don't understand that there is truly much more magic in mystery and science fiction-like wonderment about the world and the universe about us. We all just think everything can be explained and put into a box beautifully, when really it can't and it shouldn't. Because when it can't and it shouldn't, that means magic is possible. And because when magic is possible, that means magic can be possible and miracles can be possible in your life. And you don't need to be believing in some sort of religion uh, or or theology or whatever it might be. You don't need to, to believe in a specific thing or be on board with a specific church in order for miracles to happen. That's it. You know, I'm all for anyone that believes in any 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 part of religion, any part of faith. But there's a lot of us out there that aren't affiliated with anyone just because we believe in love and we believe in we believe in people doing the right thing and we believe in the possibilities of humankind and the greatness of spirit and compassion and forgiveness and all that stuff. And it's not about for me, it's not about worshipping someone that died thousands of years ago possibly you know it's not about that and i i think it's more about the way we live our lives but the more that we understand that magic really does exist and i say magic and i'm not talking about a guy with a top hat with a magic wand on stage make it pulling a rabbit from his hat i'm talking about creating everyday miracles every day and you don't need to be a magician or a priest or a monk to do them or to perform them In other news, the magnetic North Pole shift is moving faster than ever now. Uh, about 40 miles per year north is is moving. And at least once in once in our history, we have experienced a pole shift where north has become has become south and south has become north. And you know, we're kind of wondering when that's going to hit again when that event does happen that could cause all sorts of uh it could be like a mass extinction type of event or at the very least cause much havoc on the planet so things have been getting a bit crazy because uh more and more weird stuff has been happening one of the things that have happened i kind of was loosely aware of only just kind of digged into it a little bit deeper because it hit home a little bit more uh, for whatever reason, it just grabbed my attention. I was watching the movie uh, Watchers 2, which is like a little... It's not a big budget movie, it's just... Uh, but it's well done, it's w- with some scientists and researchers and what have you, and, and people that are genuinely interested in this type of thing. One of the subjects that they covered at the six minute, roughly five second mark into the movie was about the moon and how the moon is now out of phase on december the 21st 2010 there was a lunar eclipse the likes of which has not happened in about 400 years so after the lunar eclipse it's almost as though the veil was pulled over the moon something happened to the moon while we were not able to see it and then after something was different many people that study the stars the moon the planets and what have you astro- uh, astrologists i always get astrologists and astrologers mixed up <laughs> Um, much to their dismay. So what they noticed was a lot of amateur astrologists were noticing that the moon was in the wrong position and it was in the wrong, it was facing the wrong direction. It it actually turned 135 degrees and no one knows why and no one knows how because we are a constant, you know, as we evolve around the sun and the planets revolve around each other, we're pretty much guaranteed that the dark side of the moon is called that because it's always facing away from us. It's not that it's dark, it's just that we don't see it. The reality is something's happened in actuality the moon has now been rotated and it's not like an asteroid or a meteor hit it 
because if something massive hit it, then it would either be decimated or it would actually have spun around and it would keep on spinning. It's not like it's going to come to a stop. Yeah, it's it's a bit mind-blowing as to how this has actually taken place or, or, or what's going on. And they reached out to the, uh, the the people looking into this on the on the movie, reached out to Pe- Pepperdine University, uh, UCLA, the Griffiths Ob- Obser- uh, Observatory, and uh, to their dismay, pretty much the door's been slammed in their face and no one's uh, getting any solid answers as to why. I'm, I'm pretty sure that people are freaking out. It pulls into question a lot of stuff that I've heard from David Wilcox's book. And I'm wondering if the moon and the earth is fine, but I'm wondering if in somehow we slipped through another like time portal or uh, we've slipped into another dimension of, of space. So everything kind of looks the same, but a few key things are actually out of whack, such as the moon. Sounds really crazy, I know, but hey, this is what this show's about, right? Exploring the uh, the unknown and the uh, the possible impossibilities of, uh, of it all. Get out there, look for yourself, do some research on the internet. The moon has changed, and what's meant to be a fixed orbit of the planets something's changed and no one can figure out why it's almost as though we've woke up and our heads are on backwards and no one's asking why our heads are on backwards it should be it should be bigger news than it is that than it is and it's uh, a little bit confusing as to the dumbing down of this phenomenon so interesting stuff get out there look it up do some research yourself and uh, don't just believe the first thing you find do some Digger deeping. Digger deeping. Wow. Deeper digging and uh, see what you can find. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll look for an image on the internet that I can post here uh, just to on the uh, website blog page, which the easiest way to get to it is just to go to innerflame.us, www.innerflame.us. So that's it. Check it out. I'm sure I'll post an image there. Along with my dad, yeah, and the image of uh, David Wilcock, his uh, his book. Check it all out. So that's it. I'm going to try and wrap up this podcast, but I've got another story, I think, coming right up. Your life starts today. Hi, I'm Johnny Angel, and I just wanted to let you know a little bit about myself. I am a psychic medium, paranormal investigator, writer, teacher, and Reiki master, healer. It's my pleasure to be a part of this podcast and to be able to have a forum to talk with all of you. Hi everyone, I'm Psychic Lisa Ann, and I am the owner of SpiritQuest Healing Center. I am happily celebrating my 14th year this year. I am also a psychic medium, healer, and author. Thank you, Lisa Ann, and my name is Andrew Jones. I am a stoker of souls, and this simply means I help to put a fire within you to increase the inner passion to help you find the drive and purpose that you were brought here to accomplish this lifetime. I have studied Reiki, quantum touch, and have created my own successful, powerful healing technique. I am climbing the ranks of psychic ability, especially since hanging with these two amazing individuals. I am author and creator of my new book, Soul Purpose, and the 12 levels of manifesting meditation cards being released soon come listen to your life starts today podcast we talk about everything and anything pertaining to you getting a happy and fulfilled life of your dreams visit our site and subscribe today at www.yourlifestartstoday.com click on the podcast link then simply subscribe tune in each week to hear the latest show Plus, do not miss the Your Life Starts Today seminar, March 16th, with psychic Lisa Ann, Johnny Angel, and Andrew Jones at the Courtyard Marriott in Middletown, New York, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Many people talk about, you know, modern day media, the news, creating an atmosphere of doom and gloom, of it being hypnotic in a way. And on quite a few levels, I absolutely agree. I think the news is such 
woe is me and fear and a lot of fear mongering a lot of key words to keep you in a state of perpetual fear and worry and oh i better go out and buy all the water i can or i better go out and buy all the bread and milk i can and you know by by putting yourself under this sort of fear all the time by allowing this to creep into your life by taking away the magic that is available to us all you no longer create magic you you create an instance where you need to go out and buy or or borrow more money just to get by you need to go out and work harder tie that hold down another three or four jobs uh, j- just to get by you need to you know you get sick you get affected by all this negativeness and all of these things that you buy into just so you become another sheet to buy the next product to get the next big thing when in fact much of it is available to you now you've lost the ability to to conjure it up to manifest it in your own world because you're relying on other people and you part of the reason that you stop believing in yourself is because how can you believe in yourself when there's all this death destruction war famine losing of one's home you know all this stuff going on around us when in fact if you look deep enough if you look past what people are trying to tell you is true and find your own truth even me even me here and now look past this go out and find your own truth find your own right in the world and don't listen to other people don't follow the herd don't jump off with the rest of the lemmings there's so much beauty out there and there's so much wonderment you know, i'm waiting for a package to be delivered today and I, I opened up the front door and the top part of the door we can swap out to have either a glass pane or a mesh for the insects to stop the wit the insects coming in so during the summer we can have that the main door open but the the storm screen will be closed and it will allow through a nice air breeze but right now it's got nothing and it's a little bit chilly out but it's it's nice it's not too it's not too cold and i opened up the door for like the third time today and i just i I was just stood there and i was just looking at all the, the shrubbery the wet ground the air and it just struck me it's being beautiful really but i look outside and sometimes when i look outside there's an underlying worry or fear or something going on but when you let go and then you realize that you don't need to be that you don't need to be a part of that then possibility creeps in an air of today could be anything today doesn't need to be filled with fear it doesn't need to be feared with resentment or anger or bitterness any of this stuff and as i look out i just thought today could be absolutely anything that i want it to be you know and as i I was just standing there and i just started to smile and i just it was a moment of taking back some of my power it was a it was a moment of taking back some of my it was me taking control of my life and it felt good you know there's many things that i feel out of control in my life but none of it needs to be out of control it can all be in my control in my life and some of it is simply letting go of control (laughs) because you don't need to be in control but let's just say fear does not need to be in control worry upset anger now all of that negativity does not need to be in control of your life so in reading david wilcox's book it put a sense of wonderment back into my life again it put a sense of magic back into my world you know remember when you were young you you, you maybe i don't know if you have but you realize like wow how big is the universe where does it end you know we be- it becomes very hard to wrap your mind around where does the universe start where does it end what is it what shape is it is the universe just a speck of dust and a on a baseball mitt you know and yes it is and no it's not it's everything and i think for everything that i'm doing for all the podcasts for all the shows the websites and stuff that i'm trying to get teach people and show people ultimately that's probably the number one thing I'm trying to show people. Just get involved again. See the wonderment and the magic in the universe around you. Because that's what opens up a world of possibilities again. Because you start to see that everything is possible. That anything is possible. Things only become not possible when you start to believe that they're not possible. Which leads to my favourite saying by Henry Ford. When I got married the uh, second time, my brother Nick said this saying and everyone started laughing because they didn't get it they thought it was a joke but it wasn't a joke and the saying was whether you think you can or whether you think you can't you're probably right 
which means if you feel like you can do something, then you can probably do it because you feel like you can do it. But if you feel like you probably cannot do something, then you probably will not be able to do that thing because that too is your belief. So that's why I always choose to believe that I can do something, that I do have the ability and that you have the ability and that you can do something, that it's for the betterment of your spirit, of mankind, of womankind, that's, you know, for the, for the greater good of the universe, let's say. You can do it. You're listening to The Inner Flame with host Andrew Jones. Welcome to the show. Your extra baggage. It will not be required. Put your trays in the upright position and move your seat backs forward. Make yourself ready for ascension and relax. The light's amazing. It's the most beautiful light I have ever seen. It's so. I am online right now, and i got a feeling this might be a little bit too loud. My settings might have been adjusted. Um, And I'm just a little bit disgusted, really. It's just... I'm I'm in a group, and someone is having stomach pain. And there's a guy on there. This girl is experiencing very bad stomach pain. And uh, severe stomach pain. And the guy is saying... He's talking like he's he's talking like he's some like angelic god healing master. And I won't reveal his name, but he says I've been hit with karmic spears and arrows until it hurts quite a bit. Then the other lady says I can't breathe, I can't walk, I can't do anything. He says take a deep breath and say I receive through Christ drink some water and then keep saying I give it back to God till it subsides he says heed this it should be done I am looking out for you she says you don't understand I can't even reach out to get my water then someone sensible kicks in and says go to the hospital and tell them it might be an ovarian cyst (laughs) Is great. They will want they will want to do all kinds of tests and ultrasound is all they need. Then this guy says start patting down your arms. Keep the water and make circles around your belly button. The solar plexus work you did is putting you in a purging stage. I've been through it, I got the t shirt. Circles saying I reveal my true feelings. Then another gr- girl of sensibility pops in yes go to the hospital then you will know whether it's a medical condition or not sending some healing your way then this guy says it's a purging you you stirred up that area to heal he says i have been through it so then i chime in and i said two years ago i was in the hospital for stomach pain it was just under my sternum i have not felt pain like it i was told that it was the closest thing to child childbirth by one of the nurses go to the hospital don't mess with this stuff. Once it passes a certain level of pain, it's better to play safe. What is wrong with people, you know? I mean, ascension symptoms is one thing. You know, if it's if it's subtle feelings, emotions, pains, that's one thing. But if it turns into something life or death, or you could end up being sick for a very long time, and someone's telling you to pat your arms down and, and say a few magic words... I think there's a certain times when people need to err on the side of safety, on the side of quote-unquote sensibility, and that might be different for, for every one of us. But this is just crazy. See how all this started off. <laughs> the guy reached out to this girl and said, OK, I'm connecting with you in less than five private messages. His next message three minutes later, was, okay, I pushed out whatever it was. 
He then starts to flirt with her and says, okay, on road to love, you have a fantastic smile, easy connect to, to connect to. She says, I don't know what the hell it is, but it hurts, but I'm in so much pain right now. My God. Just some people. Look, I mean, if you're listening to this show and you've got, you know, I've had all these symptoms. I've had dizziness. I've had... Uh, like bouts of vertigo, I've stood up and like almost passed out, I've had slurred speech, I've had incredible headaches, I've had lows, I've had extremes in behavior of moods and emotions. Turns out I'm diabetic, you know? I'm type 2, two diabetes. And yes, I'm, I'm doing things to, to, to quote-unquote heal it my way, but please take matters into your own hands. Don't listen to some jackass out there just because they think that, uh, you know, you need to be saying these magic words or saying this particular thing that's going to, you know, all the all all the the healing words or the healing work that I enjoy to do. That's never instead of anything else. That's always been aside and apart from. So uh, it's been apart from whatever another person has been doing to make themselves well. So if they felt it was their path to go to, go to a hospital, if it's been, if they've been going to a, a naturopath, you know, whatever your healing modality might be, do it. But don't just, we're not ascended to that point yet, I feel. And it's a kind of a catch-22. I feel you need to do whatever you need to do with your mode of healing be it through faith be it through herbs be it through whatever but i think there comes a time when you need to look at it square in the face and say okay do i need a second or a third opinion do i need to go to a hospital you know and putting all your eggs in one basket are not good so this this person is a very special individual and she's certainly gone through a lot but some people are just like emotional vampires almost you know i don't necessarily like to say that word but just a leeching or a praying upon messed up very silly very silly had to uh, had to comment on that and uh, say a few words so let's see how i'm gonna edit this so i can put it up online So I'm not sure whether I mentioned here, but some months ago, uh, I was listening to Coast to Coast out on the uh, West Coast. and They just have some fantastic shows out there. And one of the things that they were doing was they were asking Bigfoot hunters from all over the world to gather their DNA samples, to gather their hair samples, their uh, whatever they may have found on their journeys. And they were conspicuous enough to think that possibly they might be a remains in some way, shape or form of an actual Bigfoot. Now, I've listened to a few shows now where some of the stories that were coming out from the state parks were absolutely mind-boggling. And I don't care if you believe in Bigfoot, if you don't believe in Bigfoot. I was kind of on the fence until I heard the latest discoveries. So what they did is they submitted all over the world submitted hair samples and skin samples and poop that they found and scooped up and put it in plastic bags and what have you. So they sent them to DNA labs, uh, several of them, I think, and they split up, split up the samples just to get three readings from various labs around the country in the US. Now, the labs had no idea initially what they were testing until they started getting strange results. There is a doctor, Melba S. Ketchum, and I think she was the lady that spearheaded the gathering of information to find out whether these DNA samples were in fact legit. Did they belong to a Bigfoot or were they of a known animal or human and what have you? So, of course, many of the samples were in fact fake or, f or false readings. They were human uh, or animal in nature, but a good 
sample of them, they were not identified in any way. The hair that was found was roughly three to four inches long and a little bit like a mane on a horse, that type of hair. It was a lot thicker than uh, human hair and it did not fit any known species for the research that's been done on every species known to man really. They found some human type of runs in the DNA. They found some of the DNA that matches our DNA, but then it just went off on a completely different angle and it had unrelated DNA known by no other research lab out there as far as, you know, being a dog, a bear, a raccoon, skunk, whatever it might have been, nothing matches anything that uh, that we know and also another interesting thing no matter what you there's several different ways to test the dna and you can tell what part of the world you came from so you'd be able to tell if your relatives came from maybe africa or maybe uh, egypt or uh, asia you know so you'd be able to find out what part of the world you actually come from in your lineage well this also did not match that type of testing. It just gave out really ridiculous results. And so much so that the DNA labs asked Dr. Melba Ketchum, you know, what are we testing here? Because we're just stumped. We've never seen anything like this. And once she said, well, this is actually suspected Bigfoot DNA, because it was Bigfoot subject matter, she, she was actually told that we cannot any longer test for this we refused to uh, to put our name to this no one wanted to legitimately stand behind the results and the findings of a scientific test because they said it would ruin their career now apparently dr melba ketchum her career has been ruined she's just standing standing behind the science but in fact everyone's looking at her like she's some sort of crackpot when really she's just reporting the findings. So there's no human contamination. Let's get that straight. There's no cross-contamination of uh, any other species. It's literally things that they're finding in these DNA results, test results, that have never been seen before. So I'm going to listen to a bit more to show, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more of what I've uh, discovered. Just absolutely amazing. And this show, if you're interested, is on uh, Coast to Coast AM on the internet, and it's show dated February the 17th, 2013, and it starts at hour one, and it also continues in hour two. So there's two hours all about this incredible subject. Samples of DNA were sent to GenLab, which initially were denied access and basically sent packing. Now, GenBank is where every piece of DNA that exists is registered here. So this is where you can um, reference any other living species for DNA, and they wanted nothing to do with it, as it was showing up as a new hominin. And apparently what was happening is they put into place rules such as we can only put the DNA in here if you can get the signature of the donor, which obviously, how are you going to go out and track down a, a Bigfoot that can write? <laughs> Species shows as human, but when you look at it deeper, there's a huge variant and it splits off in so many different levels that it's by no means human, apart from the fact that uh, the DNA does show as basically human, but there's some very big edits and changes. They found 2.7 million bases, which showed the veracity and the cohesion of this data to be true. And apparently it's a recent hybridization of either human into Bigfoot or Bigfoot into human. So there's some crossbreeding that went on at some point somewhere along the line. Just absolutely fascinating. And um, a lot of the scientists are basically saying that because they say that it cannot be, that they are saying it isn't. And they're not looking at the scientific data in any way, shape or form. I mean, no matter what your viewpoint, how pathetic is that if you're not going to look at the data or you're not going to be open-minded enough 
to uh, look at something for what it might possibly be you know it's just uh, it's just ridiculous there are so many different viewpoints and angles that i could uh, confront that on that uh, i'm not even going to open that can of worms Thank you very much for listening. This has been show number nine of the Inner Flame Ascension Symptoms podcast, The Peacekeeper Show. And uh, I have been your host, Andrew Jones. So please subscribe over on the uh, right-hand side of the uh, website here. And there's one of uh, a few ways you can get here. You can go to andrewcjones.com or you can go to innerflame.us or you can go to andrewcjones.com. Dot com and you will end up on the page and you just go there on the right hand side in the uh, in the sidebar and you can subscribe so have a fantastic week have a wonderful week and i will speak to you same time next week take care